Hey guys, it's Ms. Hall. I'm the art teacher from East York and Yorkshire Elementary Schools. And this week we're gonna be finishing up the hardcover books which we started last week. So if you're watching this video and you haven't yet made the actual pages for your book, you're gonna to wanna to go back a week in the Related Arts Learning menu so that way you can see how to fold these pages to get them ready. It's also much easier to add the drawings and words to your books before you put the cover on. Um, think about it almost like you put you want to put the present inside of the box before you grab the box, right? So this week I'm going to be showing you guys how to put the hard covers onto your book. For this all you'll need is some paper, a couple pieces of cardboard. You'll notice that I painted my paper ahead of time. Um, you could use painted paper if you want to. You could also consider using newspaper, wrapping paper, those brown paper bags that come from the grocery store, fabric, whatever you have would be great. I definitely though suggest if you're going to be using plain white paper, which this was, to paint it or to add some color to it first. Just it makes it look a little bit more special and finished. I'm super excited about these books because remember what I said, you can open them up and you can see the pages or you can open them up all the way and display them with all the pages showing. The other cool thing is once you know how to make these books, you can make them in tons of different sizes. You can make a really big giant one, or I made this tiny little book out of some of my paper scraps that I had, and it makes me so happy because it is so small. So, let's jump in. All right, so let's talk about how to create and add the hard covers to your books. Last week we made the pages for our books. We folded them and attached them. Hopefully this week you fill the pages with stories or drawings. Um, you can either open them this way or display them all the way open, which is really exciting. And if you remember last week, we put an X on the front and also the back to remind ourselves that we were not going to draw on those pages. So that way we could attach the covers. I have all of my materials assembled here and here is what you will need. You need two pieces of cardboard that you cut to fit the size of your book. You can cut this from a cereal box or an Amazon box or really anything you have. If you have a really thick cardboard like I used, you might need a little bit of help cutting the cardboard, uh, but it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, notice that my cardboard, when I put it on top of my book, it fits perfectly. It's just a tiny, tiny hair bigger than my book, so it covers all the pages. And I have two identically sized pieces of cardboard. I also have two pieces of paper that I painted yesterday just so that they had some fun color on them. I would definitely recommend putting down some color first. That way your book doesn't just look plain white. You could use crayons, markers, whatever you'd like to use. If you wanna do something a little bit more experimental, you could also consider wrapping your book in newspaper, in the brown paper grocery bags, if you've got any fabric. Um, really, there's lots of different things you could use. So. Whatever you have lying around, these are just two pieces of computer paper that I painted. If you want your book to look kind of like antique and mysterious, almost like an old treasure map, you could stain your paper with coffee or tea the day before, and that would give it like a really cool kind of aged look. So lots of things that you can experiment there. You do want to do this the day before because then you have them all dry and ready to go today. I also have a pencil, scissors, and glue. You can use a glue bottle if you don't have a glue stick. If you're really in a pinch, you could probably use tape, but glue is definitely your best bet. So let's get started. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna take those two pieces of paper that I painted and I will flip them over. So we are now looking at the back. I'm gonna move some things out of my way so that way I've got plenty of space. And now what we need to do is we need to take these two pieces of cardboard and glue them right down in the center of our paper. You'll notice that my paper is significantly bigger than my cardboard. That way we have plenty of extra paper to wrap. What we're gonna be doing is basically wrapping these like a present, putting down a good amount of glue. We know that anytime you glue something, you really need to hold it down for a good five to 10 seconds give it some glue grab time, so that way that glue has a little bit of time to dry. Remember, when glue is wet, it's not sticky. Once it's dry, that's when it's sticky, so you gotta give it a couple of seconds. And you wanna glue it close to the center, it doesn't matter if it's totally perfect or not, that is no big deal. All right, once you have glued down your two pieces of cardboard, now our next move is to cut off these corners. The reason we're cutting off the corners is because we're going to be folding this paper over. And if you don't cut off some of that extra paper, you'll notice that you have a lot of kind of extra bulky um, paper in your way when you're folding. It's just a lot easier if you cut them off. 
If you want, you could use a ruler or you could just eyeball it, totally fine. But what you're gonna do is you wanna take either that ruler or a straight edge, line it right up with the corner of your cardboard and just draw a line. I'm gonna do that all the way around. Line it up, draw a line. You wanna get really nice and close to those corners. Like I said, you guys, if you don't have um, a ruler, it's really no big deal. Really our goal with this is just to cut away some extra paper. So if it's not totally perfect, no worries. And now that I've drawn my lines, which might be a little hard to see from where you are, I'm gonna move them up so you can see them a little bit easier. Now that I've drawn my lines, I've basically made a diamond. I am going to cut those out and I will do exactly the same thing on my other ones as well. Okay, so I've cut mine out. You'll notice that they're not even totally the same shape. That's all good. I just wanted to get rid of some of that extra paper. However, I would definitely recommend that you keep some of these cool scraps, especially if you painted them. You could use these for a collage, or if you wanted to, you can make a little mini book and you can use those to create the cover for that. So now I've got my cardboard squares. They are glued down. I cut off my corners. Now it's time to start wrapping. So what that means is I'm gonna take my glue stick I'm going to put a little bit of glue down. Remember what I said, if you got a glue bottle, that's fine. If you are using a glue bottle, just be careful. You don't wanna use a ton of it because you don't want that glue seeping out of the edges of your uh, paper. It'll just get really messy and goopy. So I glued that down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really tightly pull that over top of my piece of cardboard. It's important that it's nice and tight. You don't want it to be loosey goosey. And I'm going to really hold that down for a few seconds because I want to make sure that it sticks. That's really important. And if you lift your fingers up and it pops up, you got to hold it down a little bit longer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way around the edges and do that to all of these little triangle flaps. 